This topic will look at how to prove summation results by induction. So to recap the steps for a proof by induction, the first thing we do is we assume that the statement is true for a particular value of n, which we call k. We write down the statement that we are assuming as part of our proof. We then use this assumption to show that if it is true for n equals k, it will always be true for the next number along, so n equals k plus 1. It's often helpful to write down the thing that you're aiming for in this step, um, as that way you can see when you're getting somewhere near. This is called the inductive step, so show that if it works for a particular value, it will always work for the next value along. We then start the process by substituting in the first number. This is often 1 or sometimes 0. Uh, and then we put a conclusion that as the statement is true for n equals 1, and if it's true for n equals k, it will also be true for n equals k plus 1. We can conclude that it's proven by induction that it will be true for all integer n values greater than or equal to 1. So when we are using proof by induction to prove a summation, we're going to use this fact here. The fact that if you want the sum of a particular series, starting from r equals 1 and going up to k plus 1, this is the sum of the first k plus 1 terms, we can take the sum of the first k terms, so the sum of that same series from r equals 1 up to k, and then add on the k plus 1th term. It's the sum of all the terms that came before it plus the extra term. The assumption step is this. We have often assumed that this part is true. So all we need to do is add on the next term and show that that gives us the result for n equals k plus 1. An alternative way of writing the same thing is to use letter s instead of a sigma. So the sum of the first k plus 1 terms is the sum of the first k terms plus the next term, which is u k plus 1. So we're going to use induction to prove a result that we already know. We already know the sum of the first n cube numbers is uh, n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. We're going to prove this by induction. So we're going to start off by assuming that the result is true for n equals k. So we're going to write out the result but replace all of the n's with k. Be careful that you don't replace any other letters with k. For example, r is still r in this because that is the rule of the series. So we're going to write down that the sum from r equals 1 to k of r, r cubed is, and then we've replaced each of the n's in the uh, rule with k. We've now assumed that this is true, so we can now use this in our next step. We want to use this result to show that it will be true for n equals k plus 1. We're going to write down the thing that we're aiming for here. So we're aiming to get this, that the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r cubed is, now this is just the rule here, but with k plus 1 put in each time we see an n. So we get k plus 1 squared, k plus 2 squared over 4. We haven't proven this yet, we're just aiming for it. We've written it down to show that that's what we want to get. So we're going to start by saying, well, the sum of the first k plus 1 cube numbers is the sum of the first k cube numbers plus the next cube number, which will be k plus 1 cubed. This is just the rule, r cubed, but with k plus 1 substituted in. Now, we've already got an assumption that this here, the, um, the sum of the first k cube numbers, is, is this. Okay, so we can already say that that is k squared, k plus 1 squared over 4 as part of our assumption. So we're going to replace that there. We now need to combine these into one term. So we need to get another common denominator. If we factorise this, add it, uh, add it together, we can simplify this in various different ways. You may find this easier to write this as k to, uh, 4 times k plus 1 cubed all over 4 and add it together that way. You may decide to factorise out k plus 1 squared here and see what's left. But either way, you will end up with this expression. Now, this expression here, it simplifies down. This is what we said we were aiming for earlier on. If you want to make it clear that this is what you were aiming for, you can use the phrase as required. So we now have this inductive step complete, that if it's true for n equals k, it will also be true for n equals k plus 1. We now need to show that this works for the first term. So 
So when n equals 1, there will only be one term in this summation. It will just be the, um, the r equals 1 term. So the first term only, in this case, it will just be 1 cubed, so 1. So the left-hand side of this expression is 1. You can use uh, LHS to show that you mean left-hand side here, if you want to make it more clear. But then you need to just substitute n equals 1 into the right-hand side and show that we get the same answer. Remember, this, the answer doesn't need to be 1. It should be the same as the answer here. So in this case, it is 1. So if we substitute 1 into the other side, we'll get the same answer. So we've then therefore shown that this result works in the n equals 1 case. Therefore, it's true for n equals 1. We now need to put a conclusion. So um, as this is true for n equals 1, and if it's true for n equals k, we can use this arrow if we want to, to, to mean implies. It implies it's true for n equals k plus 1. We have proved by induction that this is true for all integer n greater than or equal to 1. Next, we're going to prove this result by induction. We're going to prove that the sum of the first n terms of the series r, r plus 2, can be written as n, n plus 1, 2n plus 7, all over 6. We're going to prove this for all. And uh, this symbol here means, uh, the z means integer and the plus means positive. So this is saying that for all positive integer values of n. So therefore, we're going to use n equals, is greater than or equal to 1. So the first step is to write down our assumption that it is true for n equals k. So write down the thing you are assuming. We are assuming that the sum from r equals 1 to k of r plus 1 is, I'm just going to substitute k in for all of the n's, k, k plus 1, 2k plus 7, all over 6. Now we're going to show that it's true for n equals k plus 1. This is writing down the thing that we are aiming for. So we are aiming to get the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r r plus 1 is, and then we've just gone back to the original rule, and substituted k plus 1 in each time we see an n. So we're aiming to get k plus 1, k plus 2, 2 k plus 9, all over 6. It's a good idea to write this step down because that way you know when you've arrived at the correct answer. So we're going to do this by starting with the sum from r equals 1 to k plus 1 of r r plus 1. We're going to say, well, this is the sum of the first k terms from r equals 1 to k plus the extra term, which is the k plus 1 term. We can use our assumption that this sum here is k, k plus 1, 2k plus 7, all over 6. And then we know that the k plus 1 term is just the rule r, r plus 2, but with k plus 1 substituted in where r is. So we're going to add on k plus 1, k plus 3. So I'm going to get these together using a common denominator. So this one, I've just multiplied the top and the bottom by 6. Simplified these together. Now I've noticed that there's a k plus 1 term in both of these. I'm not expanding this out yet because I'll end up with a cubic equation that's more difficult to factorise. So I factorise out anything that you can see that is already a common factor. I'm going to pull out k plus 1 here. We can therefore see that the rest that's left is k times 2k plus 7 and uh, 6 times k plus 3. We can now expand this. This will give us a quadratic. So we end up with k plus 1 and then a quadratic 2k squared plus 13k plus 18 all over 6. This will now go into two brackets as well. So from the previous line, we can factorise this. This gives us k plus 2, 2k plus 9. If you uh, have a quick look uh, at what we were aiming for, this is exactly what we wanted earlier on. So you can write as required to show that we've arrived at the answer we wanted. Uh, and then we're just going to really summarise that. We're going to say, so the result is true for n equals k plus 1 if it's true for n equals k. That's our inductive step completed. We're now going to start it off by showing that it's true for n equals 1. So the left-hand side of the rule, if we substitute in n equals 1, it's just one term. It's going to be 1 times 1 plus 2, which is 3. The right-hand side, we're just going to put 1 in for each of the n's. If we do this, we end up with 18 over 6, which is also 3. So because we've got the same answer on both sides, we can conclude the rule is true for n equals 1. And then we need the all-important con um, conclusion here. The result is true for n equals 1, and if it's true for n equals k, it's also true for n equals k plus 1. Therefore, it's proven by induction for all integers n greater than or equal to 1. You could also use this notation if you wanted to from the question, n is an element of the positive integers. Now complete exercise 12a on page 257.